On this Two Cent Tuesday, I'm going to let you know if you can blog on the Insta 361X and see if it's even possible. I'm out here at Oak Mountain State Park. I just got this new Insta360 camera and well, I wanted to figure out if we could definitely vlog on this, if it was even possible. We have always used GoPros and I wasn't sure how this would work. It kind of feels weird talking to it because I could even turn you like this and you're still going to see me, but I don't know where to look. And so I've got to figure all this out. Cause this is my first day with it it might not even work i've always wanted a 360 camera just because we do a lot of action pack stuff it would be fun to have on some of the stuff that we've done especially like oh my gosh i could only imagine having this when we went sunrise paddle boarding that would probably have been like awesome I don't know that we're going to use this as our full-time blogging camera. I still like my GoPro. As far as aiming it, like, you just walk with it and you're going to get the shot. Even if something happens over there that I'm pointing this way, I still, I can shoot it over there real quick and I didn't miss it. Now, size-wise and weight-wise, I feel like it's pretty close to what a GoPro is. It doesn't feel any heavier or really much lighter. If anything, it probably is a little lighter feeling. One thing I know for like me and Bill, like typically it's, I never get like shots of us together, but I feel like with this, we can put the selfie stick on and then I can walk with it behind us and you can follow us along the path or I can put it way out in front of us and then you can look it back at both of us. I feel like there's certain things that I can do with it that will make a lot more sense using the 360 rather than the GoPro. Now, one thing that I really not gonna know about this until I get back and edit the footage is if the sound quality is even good. I have no idea this is my first day recording with it. I do know from what I've seen, it's probably going to add some time to our editing process because I have to reframe all this footage before I can actually edit. We'll talk about that more when I get home and after I've done all that process because that's where I'll actually finish this video up. Another thing that I'm worried about on the 360 is the lens. On my GoPros, I can change out the lens if it gets messed up. This is not changeable, and if I tear it up, I have tore it up. This one makes me really scared. I don't know why. And it is kind of nice to have the little screen on it that kind of lets me know. I mean, I know it's looking at me. It's just some place I'm gonna have to get out of my head is the framing part. And a huge thing is, is knowing that it can see, if I can see it, it can see me. I'm so used to the GoPro, the fact that I have to make sure that I'm in the shot. And this, I don't have to think about it, but I am thinking about it, if that makes any sense. We came out here to Oak Mountain State Park because like, you know, it's one of my favorite places to hike. I know a lot about Oak Mountain State Park because I've done a lot of reviews here. I've done my backpack review here. I've done my hiking shoes review here. I've even done the All Trails app review here. I don't know that I've ever taken y'all down to the falls.
Another thing that I like, it has the selfie stick and you can even get a tripod to go on the bottom of it. Now granted, it is not that stable, so I would not like trust it really good. But hey, I can set this up, then I can just put it up on this tripod and extend it and I have a cool shot that I don't have to hold my camera. Now it's still not horrible with the tripod on it. It makes it a little more heavy, but still nothing much more than the GoPro is with the stick on it. So now the cool thing about this is when I do have the tripod stick on it, the tripod extends and the selfie stick extends. So you can get really tall shots. Another thing too, I'm trying to determine how the battery life is on this. Everything I've read says that it's really good. I'm testing that out today. I'm curious. I mean, we've been recording for been over an hour off and on, and it, the little battery thing is not even moving down yet. So we'll see how that battery life is on this. Oh, there's a snake. The selfie stick helps you to capture a picture of a snake. Oh, I keep my eye looking down for them. It just looks like a king snake. It's not poisonous, but it could be. It scared me just because I was on top of it before I saw it. All the times that I've come here hiking, that's the first time I've ever seen a snake. And uh, I only hike in the summertime. kind of fun. While I'm sitting here eating lunch, I got my GoPro now. I just wanted to kind of show you things about this 360 is I originally thought that I would leave this tripod part on the bottom of it all the time, but I don't like how it's attached. It's kind of flimsy. So like, I think what I would end up doing is just carrying this with me and when I want to put it on the tripod, I can put it on the tripod, but I don't think that I would carry it all the time with this. I just, I'm not like a fan how it wobbles in there. And I feel like eventually you would break that. I might be wrong. It comes with this little cover that you can put over the top of it to keep this lens from getting scratched, but it does not protect the screen. So I'm going to have to get like a little screen protector on here. So far, I, I, I can say that I like it pretty well. I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side kind of comparison. See, I don't, this won't. And another thing about my GoPro that I like is my tripod has bendable legs. So if it's unlevel at all, it totally will say here where this, if it's unlevel, it's gonna fall over. And it's kind of top heavy. I did see where some YouTuber made one of these that had like a weight on the bottom, but then that would be something heavy to carry around. So this is just going to have to be something that I'm going to have to take with me. I think it's worth it for the shots that I'm going to get with this. I haven't edited them. I haven't looked at them yet. And I may say and change my mind when I get back home. But as of right now, uh, I think it's going to be a great addition. So I was going to do a side by side and let you see the difference between the GoPro and how the sound is on the GoPro and how the footage comes out of the GoPro versus the 360 
because the 360, I want you to see the footage and I want you to hear the sound and see if they're different. I don't know yet, but we will see here soon. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Uh -uh. <laughs> and just like that, I just ran my screen on the three sixty. I will go back and edit this footage and let you know, but I just ruined my 360 camera. I figured I'd talk for a second since I just kind of got off the camera quick. It just, it makes me sick. I like, literally am sick to my stomach. I think I could probably cry. Like, I just, I don't cry, but I could, I promise. It just makes me so sick that I just bought that camera. Literally, today is the first day that I've used it and now I've ruined it. I'm gonna have to see about getting it fixed now. You know, that's gonna be a huge negative to having it is you're gonna have to be, it's an action camera, but you gotta be careful doing any action with it because you're gonna break it. And everything that I read said that the covers that go over it, that they, it makes like a halo and they, it just doesn't look good. Well, that was the reason I didn't get any kind of covers for it. <sighs> well, I'm still gonna finish this video. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna edit the video and get everything done. And then um, I'm let you know my thoughts, even though probably not gonna have a 360 camera to use anymore. I'm just, I'm telling you, I'm so sick. All right, I'm gonna get back home, edit this video, but I'm gonna wait until I get the lens repaired so I can let you know how that goes as well. I made it back to the car and uh, it's at 67% and I recorded a lot. So battery life is good. Lens, not good. Battery life, good. Sick. Also, all the recording that I did, I have a 256 gig, 256 gigabyte card, and I have a total of 119 gigabytes is what it says, and I have 92 left. I have a lot left too, so the card is definitely working well too. Well, I have my camera back with the new lens, or maybe I have a new camera. I'm not really sure which happened. What happened is I got home that day, I messaged Insta360, I got some kind of RA number, and then they sent me an email telling me what I needed to do to send this back. So basically, they wanted me to take the battery out, they wanted me to take my SD card out and only ship back the sleeve. And I had to mail this back and it was like $20, I believe, to mail it. I should have kept up with that part better. And then inside, I had to put the case number and I had to put my home address where they would ship it back to. It took about five days and it said that they had received it and that they were gonna give me a quote and it said it could take seven to eight days to get a quote. It only took like 12 hours to get a quote. And it was $121 to get the lens repaired. So you need to like this video and subscribe because this ended up being a really expensive video. I had a $9 inspection fee, a $99 lens replacement fee, and a $13 shipping cost. That's a breakdown of the $121. Well, I didn't hear anything for like two or three weeks, and we had a trip coming up, and I really needed this for the trip. Messaged them and asked them, could I get an update? Like, how long was it gonna be? Just so I could prepare to not have it or have it for our trip. 
The lady said that she would try to get me an update and then I still didn't hear anything. A couple of days later, I messaged again asking about it and she said that she would try to expedite it. And then I got an email the next day that said they were shipping me a new device. It said that they were shipping me a replacement device. I got the replacement camera and they shipped it with the battery. So now I have two batteries and I didn't have to buy one. But me getting the extra battery, that probably takes 30 or $40 off of it because I didn't have to buy one, I got one. So now I have two batteries for it. But the battery life on this thing is really good. I didn't even use a half of it that whole day that I recorded. I don't know if you can tell or not, but I did end up getting the lens caps on this. And I did take a little bit of footage and you can see where the stitch line is, like when it's in the sun or if it's close to the sun, but I wasn't getting the lens flares that I thought that I would. I'm definitely keeping the, these lens caps on there. I do not want to ruin my lens again. So that's what happened with the lens. Now, let me talk about my thoughts and everything about vlogging with the Insta360. I don't think that I would ever vlog with it. If that's all I had, I would vlog with it. The audio on it was very unpredictable. There was sometimes it sounded really weird and then sometimes it sounded great. It added a little extra time and I've got to learn because I know you probably saw some of the footage and probably some people that have used it a lot or were like, oh my gosh, I got to learn how to get the fisheye out. It's just how much you've zoomed in or zoomed out, but I didn't know that at the time that I was doing all that because I've only edited that one set of footage. I do love the fact that while you're using it, you won't miss a shot because there's some times that I have missed the shot with the GoPro. And with the 360, I know that no matter what, I got the shot. I like the fact, and now that I've used it, I will know how to use it, the fact that I just hold the camera out and walk and not have to worry about where I was looking because I could adjust where I was looking in the app when I reframe the shots. Now, when you're doing the point of view, that can give that handheld look like somebody is filming you, especially if you could set it up somewhere and you're looking and you're talking, it can give that motion shake because you're doing it handheld. Another great thing that it had was the tracking feature. Whatever subject you wanted to track the whole video, it would stay on there and you didn't sit, have, sit there and have to, to move it around. I liked how sometimes you were walking and it was like a drone over the top of you looking down on you. I loved that field of view. It just gave a different perspective to your vlog. Now you always wanted to make sure, but you did want to keep that lens towards your face so you don't end up getting any kind of weird stitch line. Another thing that I did wrong when I was filming is I was moving this around a lot and you don't need to do that. You just need to hold this out and move your body. Don't move the camera. I felt like it was weird to edit if I was holding the camera here and then I moved the camera to here. Don't do that. You wanna keep the camera on you in the same position all the time. That way it's not having any weird movements. And if you hear the beeping, that's Bill on his golf simulator. And if you wanna see how he installed that, here's a video on that. Editing the video footage, it was the exact same editing it in Premiere Pro. I didn't have any issues with that at all. If you get an Insta360, make sure you don't drop it because you will scratch the lens. And also don't pay attention. As of right now, I haven't had any bad halos that I didn't already have with the camera without the lens caps on. So I would definitely, if you're gonna buy one, get the lens caps for sure. Don't not get them because you think the footage is gonna be bad. Overall, I really love the 360 and I will definitely be using it quite a bit in some of our vlogs but it will not be my main go-to camera. Till next time, like and subscribe.